There was no lighthouse to beckon the explorers D'Iberville and Bienville to the shores of the Mississippi coast in 1699. But since their arrival, more than 300 years ago, millions have been drawn here to make their homes, to raise their families, to work, or just to enjoy the natural beauty of the South Mississippi that we all love. But on August 29, 2005, one of nature's greatest forces, a monster hurricane named Katrina, would change our vibrant community forevermore. In the weeks and months before Katrina, the area is a blend of excitement, prosperity, and growth. It's the summer of 2005, and along the coast, there was also controversy. Yeah, but it just wrecks the view, and I think it wrecks the whole city. A debate over building high-rise condos along the coastline grows. People against the development are afraid the changing skyline will destroy the natural beauty of the area. And I am going to be looking at five 180 foot concrete slabs. Another debate is whether to drill for natural gas near the islands in the Mississippi Sound. This don't jeopardize we have for the sake of letting a couple of guys make a few bucks. And once again, the quality of life is the focus for people opposed to the drilling. Our forefathers protected them. We, we trying to protect them and save them for our children, their children. The main reason why I'm passionate about it is that these islands are sacred. They should be preserved instead of destroyed. And there is sadness to hear the government is closing Naval Station Pascagoula. The military is getting smaller, and uh, getting smaller is always tough. In Biloxi, it's out with the old and in with the new. People come from all around to spend one last night in the hotel that was once called the Jewel of South Mississippi Hotels. I guess the condos are coming in. Yes, sir. Progress, they call that. After nearly 76 years of hosting guests in South Mississippi, the Broadwater Hotel, part of the President Casino's property, is closing its doors forever. It has a glorious past. It has kind of a mixed present. And uh, the future of it is going to be really, really brilliant, really beautiful. Developers plan a new condo, casino, and shopping complex for the site. Uh, our vision is a retail a lifestyle mall, uh, brick streets, gas lantern, outdoor pavilion, restaurants, a lot of excitement at night, uh, shopping during the day, as, as well as uh, condos. A few miles away, Biloxi's newest casino and hotel is about to turn up the volume. Two years in the making, workers put the finishing touches on Hard Rock Casino Biloxi. We'll have pieces in here from Elvis, Madonna, Kiss. And there's a lot of anticipation about when they'll get the party started. We're, we're going through a massive training right now with the staff, and as we get our systems in place and we feel very comfortable, uh, we'll open. And we're definitely going to make our target date, and uh, we're going to open the end of August, beginning of September. Just down the road, work progresses on the world-class Or O'Keefe Museum of Art, designed by renowned architect Frank Gehry. This is really I think, the most significant event in the southeastern part of the United States, and maybe the country. I mean, just to have the George Orr Museum here, coupled with Frank Gehry, it is so exciting. It is to house a collection of pottery from famous South Mississippian George Orr, the Mad Potter of Biloxi, as well as pieces from other artists. It's just a glimpse of what how fabulous it's going to be. Happy birthday, baby! A few weeks before Katrina, a famous Mississippian enjoys a huge birthday bash on the coast. Everybody, let's have some fun. The Olive Capri Casino throws blues man B.B. King a star-studded 80th birthday party and invites everyone. Two cities to the west, another birthday celebration, this one in Long Beach. The waterfront city turns 100 years old on August 10th. And as summer winds down, there's still more excitement. I'm here today because I've always wanted to be on Wheel of Fortune. The popular game show rolls into town for contestant tryouts on Point Cadet and Biloxi. People come from all over to see if they have the puzzle-solving talent to be on national TV. And in Harrison County, a new civil defense director is taking over. After decades of military service, Colonel Joe Spragans is looking forward to using his years of experience for public safety. You know, crisis management, that's what a hurricane is. You know, you have crisis management at that point to make a decision. Well, that's the military's way. And uh, I've got 33 years of crisis management. Those 33 years of crisis management will soon be tested more than he can ever imagine. Colonel Spragans' first official day on the job will be Monday, August 29th. South Mississippians continue going about their everyday lives. But everyday life is about to change. A tropical system forming in the Atlantic will soon be the focus of everyone. Now this is the more important 
bit of information I need to share with you, and that is exactly where they expect this storm to go. Again, look how quick they expect it to become a tropical storm, and when and if it does become a tropical storm, the name will be Katrina. It doesn't seem like a threat to South Mississippi at first. As Katrina develops into a hurricane and cuts through South Florida, all the information for the National Weather Service has the storm hooking back into Florida's panhandle. Now again, watching what's going to be happening with Katrina, we're watching it move out toward the, toward the west, but then it takes a northerly turn and then up to the northeast. So they're still maintaining that it's going to be going in around Apalachicola. So again, that is very good news for us here in South Mississippi. However, we're still going to be keeping a close eye on it. South Mississippi has recently been twice spared any major damage from Hurricanes Dennis and Ivan, both of which ravaged Florida's panhandle. And with the current track of Katrina, there's no reason to believe any different. That is until Friday afternoon, August 26th. The 4 o'clock Tropical Advisory has news that will concern every South Mississippian. Katrina's path has changed. The prognosis, not so good for us now. It has shifted back further to the west, and anywhere where we are seeing this yellow, that is, the, of course, the potential for where this storm could go. So again, we'll be keeping a very close eye on this. Hurricane Katrina is now headed towards South Mississippi on a wide path. Even though the cone covers hundreds of miles in either direction, people begin to prepare as the storm moves into the Gulf of Mexico. There isn't a rush at first, probably due to the fact that the area dodged other recent hurricanes, and for some, complacency has set in. But by Saturday afternoon, many people were taking no chances. Katrina has turned into a huge storm and it's now being compared to Camille. Homeowners everywhere board up windows and fill sandbags. I gambled on uh, Dennis and I didn't put up. But I'm not gambling this time, so I've got to put up. I'm thinking this one might come. Well, my neighbor started putting his up and then I said, well, maybe I should because he's never put it up before. And I think this one's a little bit more serious than, than the rest of them. I got a big house. My mom lives next door. She's got a big house. And we, was, we stayed in this house for Hurricane Camille, and we're 28 feet above sea level. We had 11 inches of water in this house. So, you know, it's, East Biloxi is a low-lying area, so you, know, you need to get prepared in case you have to evacuate and get out early, so you want everything done. Stores see a jump in business as people who aren't ready for a hurricane hurry to stock up on supplies. Everyone's looking for generators, plylox clips, um, plywood, fasteners, uh, water, batteries, the whole gamut. You know, uh, the last um, emergency uh, situation we had, everyone was kind of frantic. This time everyone seems to be calm. Uh, uh, but I think as we get closer uh, to the, this tonight and tomorrow, it's going to get a little more frantic. Every, everyone is going to start reaching and grabbing everything like they do. You know, when you get close to anything, you just get the jitters. It's just scary. I just heard about 10 minutes ago that it could go from a 4 to a 5. We're concerned. When they say Category 4, Category 5, you better board up and get ready. A parade of boats begins to leave the Gulf in a routine trip they make whenever tropical weather threatens the Mississippi Sound. They pass the eastern tip of Biloxi, known to locals as the Point, and head into Biloxi's Back Bay. Back Bay is usually a safe harbor for boats during bad weather from the Gulf. But like everyone else in our area, boat owners will soon learn there's nothing usual about Hurricane Katrina. I'm here at the Popsbury Bridge where right now the bridge is open and we can see dozens of shrimp boats going through trying to get safe harbor. And joining me now with bridge maintenance is Stephen Lesh. Mr. Lesh, what kind of schedule are you opening the bridge on right now? We're opening right now at every half hour at 10 minute intervals, letting the boats come through. We urge now is the time to evacuate, get all these boats through for the winds, get 34 miles an hour sustained. We cannot open when that's the case. And we're trying to get them out as quickly as possible. And the traffic and uh, uh, boats have been very patient. It's working very well. With the dawn of Sunday morning, August 28, South Mississippians awake to the news that Katrina has grown even stronger, a Category 5 storm with 175 mile per hour winds. And more alarming news, South Mississippi will be directly in the path of the east side of the storm, the most powerful and potentially the most deadly side of a hurricane.
expecting if this storm stays on this track with the forecasted intensity, let's just say it's not going to be good. You need to pre prepare. Now, all those other ones missed us to the east. This one doesn't look like that's going to happen. This is going to probably be one of the close to the worst case scenarios if everything forecast as present. People waiting to decide what to do can no longer wait. Katrina is gaining strength and time is running out. You're going to hit the road pretty soon? Pretty quick. Are you worried about this storm? I went through Camille. <laughs> scared me, but I mean, my wife's more scared about it than I am, and they say it's going to be pretty bad, but uh, so I'm going to have to get her out of town. Ma'am, are, are you leaving? Are you heading out? Yes, right now. What made you decide to leave? Um, 175 mile per hour winds. <laughs> that, that's bad. I was here through Camille, and I know some of those houses are going to go up like matchboxes. What are your thoughts about this storm? Well, you know, I've lived here on and off for about 30 years. I moved back here right after Camille, and I remember what it was like then. And uh, this has got all the earmarks of something that could be... I told my family as we were coming down the beach, I said, you might want to take a look because if it comes right, in, right ashore here, it may not look like this again, you know. Um, and that's kind of melodramatic, but... You know, I remember how it was here in 71 and when we first came back after Camille and, you know, people take these things a little lightly, I think, because we really haven't had a really strong storm here, you know, in a long, long time. Last one I can really remember is Frederick when we were, didn't have any power for, you know, a week or 10 days after Frederick in 79. But, you know, if, if we're lucky, it'll go east or west of us, but you never know. And I just I can't take that chance. I live about a block off the beach, and so I just can't take that chance. South Mississippians are now under evacuation orders from civil defense. And for those who obey that order, the roads out of town move at a snail's pace. For much of this day, I-10 eastbound has been nothing but one big traffic jam. Cars and trucks moving very, very slowly. In fact, it got so bad from Louisiana to Alabama that the state closed the eastbound lane by blocking the on-ramps. And that lasted for about two hours. But just a short while ago, officers were letting people back on the on-ramps to get back into the eastbound lane, saying they felt that the traffic was moving smoothly again. However, if you take a look at the traffic, it is still bumper to bumper. It is still moving very, very slowly. So I guess it's anyone's guess if it's really moving slowly or not. I guess you'd have to ask some of those drivers in the eastbound lanes of I-10. These folks are moving out of the area trying to escape the hurricane that is bearing down on us. They are headed eastbound on the interstate. Meanwhile, at Marine Life on the water in Gulfport, work is underway to protect the dolphins and sea lions that entertain thousands of tourists a year. Moby Salini joins me now. And Moby, how are things going? This is tough, isn't it? Yeah, it's very hectic. Um, you know, we're preparing, we're moving animals, we're moving equipment, uh, we're moving our merchandise, we're totally evacuated. Do you think the animals know there's something up? I'm looking over there at those um, dolphin and they look um, real interested in what's going on of course they always are anyway but animals have a sixth sense don't they well they, when they see activity they know that something is going on so what is your main priority then today as far as uh, marine life is concerned well our main priority is to secure our animals secure our facility and so that uh, we can uh, keep everything safe and come back and be in operation Back on the beach, surfers take advantage of the changing weather. What is it that drives people ahead to the water when there's a hurricane coming? We always have the wind. We have a good beach and everything, but the wind really makes a difference. And you get to have like 20 mile an hour sustained winds to keep a kite up and, you know, to move around. You know, if you come out here on a clear day, you know, and it's calm, it's just, you know, it's no fun. You're going to be sitting there waiting for the wind. So they take it, all surfers take advantage of anything with the weather, you know, and you get it while you can get it. When, the police going to run y'all. On the air, WLOX-TV is now covering the storm around the clock for people hungry for storm information. I want to explain something to folks. You're saying, well, why are you guys going on so early to talk about this? Well, folks, we're trying to tell you the gravity of the situation with this particular storm. This is not a storm that's going to move to the east of us. We are not going to be on the west side of the storm on the current track. We're going to be on the east side of the storm, and from the looks of things, we're going to be very close to the center of the storm. With each Katrina update, the news gets worse. Now the projected landfall Monday morning. High tide. The worst possible time to come ashore. Starting from about 4 o'clock in the morning until at least 12 to 13 hours, it's going to be just, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, hurricane force winds for 12 hours. 
Not a pretty sight at all, sir. Not a pretty sight and not something that we've seen here, I don't think, ever, to the fact of that many uh, hours of, a, of, of just solid hurricane force. The eye wall's 30, you know, the eye's 30 miles wide, and when you're looking at that with the surge that we're talking about now, they're talking 22 to 28 feet. Uh, it's going to be a different ball game. A different ball game indeed. Fears of a tidal surge, the likes of which the coast has never seen, begin to sink in, especially in Hancock County, where Katrina is projected to do the most damage. What we're trying to put out to people, you're looking at a category, possibly a category four storm coming through. You know, um, we want people to go ahead and start make preparations. Now, let's get out now. We're trying to make sure everybody understands that this is a serious storm. This is not a tropical storm. This is a possibly category four storm. With potential storm surge of 18 feet, uh, that will put water over much of Waveland. And we want our people to prepare. Don't wait till the, till the very last moment. This is a very, very serious storm. It's not like the tropical storms and category ones we've had in the last few years. Uh, we're, we're not looking at a good situation. Um, you know, we've been fortunate with the last few that's come through where we've pretty much died some big bullets. Uh, but this one isn't a bullet. This is more like a cannon. It's coming. We're going to get hit. More calls from people in charge to evacuate. Shelters across South Mississippi begin to fill up. I urge all citizens to put their own safety and the safety of their families first by moving to safe ground. We want to urge you to get out of this area as soon as possible. It's uh, imperative that you get out of this area as soon as possible. This is, this is a very dangerous storm. We urge you people to leave as soon as possible. If you're looking at TV, please, you need to close up your home and don't worry so much about boarding it up anymore. Just please leave. This storm is dangerous. Again, that was First Lady Marsha Barber, Director of Public Safety George Phillips, saying over and over and over again that if you have to leave, or you should leave if you haven't by now, that uh, get out, get out, get out, get out. That's the bottom line of that message. What's your name, sir? Uh, Lonnie Myrie. Tell me, why did you decide to come here? Well, mainly because that's what she said to you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, were you guys scared of the storm? That's why you decided to come? Well, we didn't want to stay at home with that uh, Category 5 because I, I had just moved to the coast when Camille came in, and I sure didn't want anything worse than Camille. So Camille was my first experience with a hurricane. Many people evacuate, but many don't. I don't threaten to have anywhere to go, and uh, I've stayed through Camille from Camille on, so I'll just sit this one out also. And with more pleas to get out of the area come fears that many aren't listening, and it will soon be too late. It, it grieves me that I think we have some hurricane fatigue that because Ivan ticked over to the east right at the last and missed us and Dennis never quite came this way and that people had boarded up and secured and hunkered down, evacuated twice, that, that this time we failed to get some people's attention as early as I wish. Uh, and that, that bothers me, and that's why I said today in the press briefing, I mean, I beg people to leave. You know, don't fool around with this storm. Driving around, I see, you know, not a lot of preparations going on, boarding up windows, and uh, flew over 49, even though the traffic is steady, I don't see as much as I'd hope. And I just fear that people are going to wait till the last minute and then maybe decide not to evacuate. I'm here at Bayou Oaks Mobile Home Park here in Gulfport, and I'm talking to Monique, who has decided to stay. Monique, why are you staying? First of all, we were supposed to evacuate the last hurricane, and nothing really happened. And by the eye being in New Orleans, and all we're going to get is just the wind and the rain, I don't think it's necessary for anybody to leave. Right. So are, you're not nervous at all? Did you at least stock up on your supplies? Yeah, I got supplies, but still, um... If he wants you, he's going to get you, regardless of where you go. That's it. All right. Now, you, I know that with it being so bad, are you worried about if you need help, people being able to get to you or anything? Well, like about rescuers? I mean, that's what they're here for. So if I need them, they should be able to come and get me. I just want everybody to understand that if this storm keeps on this track, keeps intensifying, in other words, if this forecast is right, we need to be prepared. Right. This is the one 
that we've been talking about. This is the one we want to beat everybody over the head with and say this is the one we don't mess with. As the hours pass, those who wait to evacuate find themselves searching for gas stations that still have fuel. Uh, this is my fifth one. I went to a truck stop over there, a couple down the road, and then I went back toward uh, Pass Roads. So, I mean, either they are wall to wall or they say they're already out of service. So. And I'm just making sure in case I have to go because my family is so worried about me being this close to the water to get back inland somewhere. So. The roads inland for evacuees who do have gas become slow moving traffic jams. But on Highway 90, a different story. As it begins to get dark here along the Mississippi coast, some last minute boarding up is underway. Here in Biloxi at O'Charlie's, the crews are putting up the last boards. We saw a lot of businesses and a lot of homes boarded up as people get ready to ride out Hurricane Katrina. And if you look over at Highway 90, we're crossing over the sidewalk in front of O'Charlie's. Highway 90 is virtually empty. There is not a lot of traffic at all, so there are no traffic jams here to worry about. And if this was a normal summer Sunday evening, you'd probably see quite a few people on the beach getting in some last minute walking as they enjoy a sunset for the day. Well, I can tell you the only creatures on the beach right now are the birds.